Hi everyone, welcome to Priority Holder. Today we've got some Explorer gameplay using Colorless Super Friends. And we're gonna to need to expand this window to see exactly what we have going on. So Super Friends is like a magic archetype where you slam a bunch of planeswalkers. And we'll be using the, the Colorless All-Stars, Karn and Ugin, both their varieties we have on Arena. And I guess the, the main gimmick is that when you play colorless, you just get pure utility lands. So don't have to worry about basics or color fixing or anything like that. So we get four blast zone, four crawling barons. Um, you also get four mobilized districts. You have eight creature lands in total. And then a few other ones that I wanted to try out. So I have one inventor's fair, incidental life game, possibly tutor, um, Karn's Bastion for some proliferating on the planeswalkers. Labyrinth of Scopthos to act like Maze's End. Um, but a really helpful one is Radiant Fountain. Enters Battlefield to gain two life. This just, as you can see, this deck is incredibly slow. We don't do much in the early game, so this just helps pad our life total out. And Scavenger Grounds against the, the many graveyard strategies in this format, like Grease Fang and, and um, Sacrifice with uh, Cauldron Familiar, stuff like that. Um, so, but yeah, the Planeswalkers are the main centerpieces, and so everything else is there to help us buy time or accelerate towards the Planeswalkers. And so, um, one special piece of technology, I think people are, I just don't ever see it when playing it, is Heart of Kieran. It's just a powerhouse card. Um, it's a 4-4 Flying Vigilance. It can be crewed simply by removing a loyalty counter from a Planeswalker. And so, if we can set up with the Heart of Kieran, that allows us to possibly drop our four mana planeswalkers and have them live through live till our next turn. So that's big time right there. Uh, we also have a couple of ratchet bombs. These can immediately come down and nuke tokens, or they can charge up to kill other things. Maybe you should be playing more. I do have one in the wish board for a card to grab. Also some maze mind tones, just just card draw and a little bit of life game tacked on to it if we can get all the way to the last activation. So ideally when building this deck, I wanted to include as many ramp cards as possible. However, there just really aren't any. The only two mana artifact ramp I could find was only for certain, like choose a creature type kind of thing. So it, it wouldn't work for us at all. There's some three mana rocks, but they're just not that amazing. So I included what I thought were some of the better ones. So we only have five mana rocks. Um, we have Honored Heirloom, three Skyclave Relics, and a Celestis. Part of this is a function of wild card. I, as you can see, this deck is already very taxing on the wild card. So um, using what I have, um, Skyclave Relic can kick it to get extra copies to help accelerate us. Also notably, it's indestructible. And so we can uptick Karn the Great Creator to have like a really tough to deal with blocker so that's part of why it's in there also. Celestis can give us some card advantage. Um, Heirloom, like I said, it's to ease the wild card burden of this. Circuit Mender is just more life gain. It's just a roadblock. It's all it's there for is to buy time, gain life, draw cards. Um, Karn Sign of Ugin can get us some card advantage. Karn advantage, you could say. And then... It can also spit out creatures that can get pretty big with all the artifacts we're dumping. Karn the Great Creator is a very strong one. Most notably, it, well, it's going to shut down active abilities of our opponents. So if we happen to run into artifact decks, they're not going to like that. Um, this plus one, like I said, works at Skyclave Relic. The real deal with Karn is the minus two. And so if you look at our wish board, this is just is just I haven't played this deck that much. This is a guess of what would be useful in the in the format. So, I have Tormat's Crypt, zero mana graveyard hate. Just if we're in a bad situation, we can minus play this right away. Nuka graveyard, Soul Guide Lantern as just a secondary graveyard hate spell could be should be another crypt possibly. Graph Digger's Cage, um, once again fighting graveyard. I anticipate having to do that a lot. Um, Pithing Needle, just anti-planeswalkers, or just it's very general purpose. In fact, maybe we should be having more of these in the wish board. And because we're playing best of one, we're limited to just seven 
wish board one. So we have to be very selective. I have an additional ratchet bomb. We'll see how useful that is, being able to fish that up. Um, also have Mystic Forge. So this is just like a really, really powerful card in this archetype. So it allows us to play artifact and colorless spells off the top of our library. And that's everything in the deck. So this is just insane card to play, like card advantage. If we can slam this, we can close out the game. Like, it'll be hard for opponents to keep up with this. And I also have an additional Forsaken Monument. So this card is just really powerful. Um, another reason to pay off for running the colorless mana base is that it's like a Mirari's Wake. It doubles our colorless mana and gives us two life when we cast color spells. So it just, it does a whole lot. And we can play this and then cast Ugin the Spirit Dragon the next turn. So I have an extra one to, for, for fetching with Karn the Great Creator. Now, all the other cards in the sideboard are candidates either for the main deck or for the wish board. Ornithopter might be good to have that and there's just a cheap blocker to pull out with Karn the Great Creator. Lux, Luxior to animate Planeswalkers. This would be mostly just for a fun thing. I think turning on your opponent's creature removal is actually probably bad in most instances. Now here's a curious card I was also looking at, Mimic. It For our deck would be mostly a two mana Lotus Petal, which is pretty horrible, but it can animate into a creature. So I'm actually thinking about trying it out sometime. So we'll have to keep, keep an eye out on situations where this would be good. Um, Thaumatic Compass can fetch basics. So it would require reworking, but it does turn into a land, like a strong maze of it. So Unlicensed Hearse um, could be in the wish board as Graveyard Hate. God Pharaoh Statue. When I played these decks in the past, this was often like a, a finisher card that I'd play. The two mana attacks really locks out a lot of decks. And it's just, just something to con consider. Uh, Meteor Golem, all-purpose removal, Metalwork Colossus, massive blocker that could come down a lot cheaper with our mana rocks. So, a lot to consider, but let's go ahead and, and, and take it for a spin and see if we can slam some Planeswalkers. All right, see what we got. Oh, yikes. This is not a great hand. Just three six drops in there. I mean, it really depends on what we're facing, but I think I think we got a much better hand. Like These are essentially blank in the early game, so let's mulligan, see if we can get something better. Oh, man. So a two lander. This does not look great. Um... We'll have to see how it goes. We'll throw an Ugin and the Spirit Dragon back. And... We'll have to see how this goes. Thankfully, third land showed up. But Seiju could be a problem for us. This looks like a food food token deck. All right, Heart of Kieran, pass. Okay, so they'll be leveraging Trail of Crumbs to get tons of card advantage. Now, having seen Besaid, you have to keep an eye out for that. Just recognizing that could nuke an artifact. Unfortunately, that can that really weakens Eldrazi Monument. The fact that people can play this destroy it so easily. On a good note, they are just not pressuring us, so um, we will happily take that. All right, we did not draw a land, so I'm going to throw out the mana ramp. I was considering Circuit Mender, but... Um, we got to try and accelerate it, see if we can plus Karn and start getting some lands. 
Unfortunately, opponents also getting plenty of time for their engine. We'll have to see what their big payoffs are. Um, Feasting Troll King, perhaps. Um, Wicked Wolf. So they do have Beseju. Oh, Beseju is actually really good against us because we don't have any basics. Basic land type land, so... And they might be realizing that... Oh. Alright, so we'll throw Karn out there. All right, so we're we're desperate for land, so we're gonna we're gonna plus Karn. Let's see what the opponent gives us. They'll probably give us the tome, realizing we need. Okay, maybe not. All right, that's actually good for us. Now, I can defend Karn with Heart of Kieran, so. But they got Besaju at the ready, so Heart of Kieran won't be around for very long. Opponent's thinking. Now, how does the discount work on that? It's it's for legend. What do you have to control? Legendary creatures. So. Oh, they could. Okay, they could cast it. Okay, I see. That's why I was giving them priority. How many Besages do they have, is the question. All right, there's Cat. They discarded Trail of, Trail of Crumbs, interesting. Alright, so we're going to attempt to fire it up and block. But it's likely going to get Besaju down. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have any, so Besaju is super good against us. Oh, man. Okay. Well, so that was unfortunate, but honestly, it might have been better that they used Besaju on that target rather than uh, our Forsaken Monument, which is going to be big time for us. I mean, if we can drop Ugin, we might be able to slam the door right there, so... Um, I think we want to make sure we tap this for something. That way we can still cast Maze Mind Tone once it starts doubling our mana. Now let's hope at this point they don't rip like a Thought Seize or something. That would be horrific. I, for, I neglected in the deck tech, neglected to talk about this land, Interplanar Beacon. Just a colorless source that works with the Forsaken Monument. And uh, it really can gain it a lot of life with all the Planeswalkers we have. But do extra priority passing because of Maze Mind Tome. So. All right, there it is. There's the anvil. Hopefully they play it because then Ugin's just going to massacre everything. Question is, do we scry with Maze Mind Tone? Let's see what happens. All right. 
Now, hopefully they have a sense of urgency and and play the Onico Amble, because we... Like, Ugin the Spirit Dragon Minus is just going to clean up everything for us. Opponent has a lot of priority pass things also, so they're... We had the pass, they had the pass, so there's a lot of priority passing, and if one person forgets for a second, then it might... It slows the game down. Alright, play Anvil. There it is. Okay. Alright, they're going to sack that. Drain us. Create a 1-1. One, one. Now, fortunately, we... Oh, baby. Okay. Alright. Corvold. Now, thankfully, Ugin can still deal with that. Though it will leave, like, if we only had to minus three to take out Reflections of Kikijiki and everything else under, we'd still have so much loyalty. The fact that we're going to now have to nuke five loyalty off means that they could just strangle him like they did uh, our low loyalty Karn. Now, unfortunately, they're going to be able to keep at least one of their cats from exile with the witch's oven. And able to... Yeah, so the witch's oven will not be touched. So, I think I am going to scry. Blast zone. It actually could be really good to nuke witch's ovens and stuff like that, so... Um, yeah, I guess we just, we just whammy them. Now there's still a lot they can have that could get us. We're going to do five. Now they're going to put their cats in the graveyard. And... Okay, so they could put one cat. They're thinking about it. It's, Corvold's going to keep drawing cards, which is a problem. Now, we could crack Blast Zone to kill the oven. I don't think we need to do that yet, yeah, do we? I'm trying to think. Do we want to kill the oven that badly? It allows the cats to keep coming back. I think it is worth it. No, let's... No, because then the other cat goes in the graveyard. Doing it this way allows us to... There we go. At least reduce them down to just one cat. So we'll play this. Alright. And we have um, mana left to actually draw a card Maze Mind Tome, so... So opponent's definitely not out of it yet. Be feeling a lot better if we can plus Ugin. Okay, there comes Cat. Alright, they're gonna kill that. Sure. Skyclave Relic. Not very helpful. So. Opponents could be able to. Opponent generated so much card advantage with Corvold and Trail that they're definitely not out of it. 
Oh, so that's why they're running the sack lands is for free value. So me, so mayhem devil's got to be in here somewhere. I have to remember that. Um, fortunately, Ugin is still alive, so we're gonna maze mine tome labyrinth, Karn's Bastion. All right, so. Now, if we plus on the cat, that doesn't really do anything. We'll just sack it in her. So I'm trying to get my attackers through. Attackers are actually pretty big, the mobilized districts. But the cat's going to be around no matter what, how much, with witch's oven and the food that, that's happened. So we're just going to go up. Well, yeah, we're going to go upstairs. We should be able to pretty easily fire both mobilized districts. Um, with Ugin on the battlefield, they should only cost three mana each. For us right now, that's three lands to activate both. I don't think there's a big need for Labyrinth at this point. Yeah, opponent like if they're not right on things, they're there's both of us have so many priority passes, so Okay. We'll play Karn's Bastion. Let's uh let's activate Mobilize District. Let's see. Um and we'll activate one of these. All right, all right, we got there. Yeah, opponent saw the writing on the wall. Okay. It, it would have, yeah, taken a little bit of time, but there are going to be 5-5 five, five Vigilances coming in. That would still leave us mana to, to activate, like Karn's Bastion or card draw. So, all right, that went really well. All right, here we go again. Now, I have three... Of the big Ugins, three of this. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's nice. Um, three Ugin the Spirit Dragons. It's so essential as like a closer in so many of these games, or at least as like a destroy everything, break their spirit, cause a concession card. So maybe should be playing four. All right, so the question is, what do we grab with Karn, the great creator? I think if we have, oh, okay, well, there's the there's the Eldrazi monument, so um, that's what I was probably going to grab if I had lands for it. It may not hurt to put like a mana rock or something in the, if only we had artifact lands, also that would be clutch. Oh man, we didn't even land Karn the Great Creator against them last time, that or last game. That would have made them very unhappy. Okay. Graveyard Trespasser. I honestly don't know what to get, so... Um, Uh, guess we'll get Mystic Forge. Now, I was considering plusing Karn there to animate Heart of Kirin. Um. Alright, so. Now, this could work out poorly. I'm gonna, you know, if they have a removal for Heart of Kirin, then both things die, so. You are acting unwise. And it's red black, so they probably don't have any removal. I mean, red black's never been known to kill creatures. Fatal push. 
There it is. All right. I think that's very okay, though. A land right now would be in... Oh, okay. Do we play Mystic Forge? I think it's better to go Sky Cape Relic. Heart of Kirin. Just to ensure a, a Forsaken Monument. I keep saying the wrong name. Forsaken Monument next turn. The opponent is wondering what's going on. Thankfully, we have an extra Forsaken Monument. Though they might be packing like Coligan's Command, so that would be a major blowout. There goes our poor Mystic Forge, which is the only one we have. They're probably going to nuke it for good measure. Now, fortunately, we're not under a lot of pressure. Do we have enough time deal with this annoyance. to Karn get Pithing Needle shut down Soren? I think I'm just going to slam the monument and really try and go wild the next turn. Now they got a lot of creature lands also, so us us missing our lands and um yeah there goes the creature lands going wild. So we might be getting close to Ugin big Ugin or bust territory. In fact, we may already be there. Oh, a braid. Yikes. Oh boy. That is tough. Does Blast Zone help us at all? No, it's not doing anything. Until you have lived at the statue, do not call to me of hatred. I guess me I could have uh Now they have two creature lands, right? So if we shut down Den of the Bugbear, they just have Hive of the Eye Tyrant. So Needle is not going to do enough right there. Oh, Ratchet Bomb. Yeah. Oh, man. That's what I'm talking about. Unfortunately, because we didn't draw land, we can only play Ratchet Bomb. We can't play other Karn. Also, unless we, like, hit a land really fortunately so yeah oh a braid that's right I forgot all about a braid yeah that's bad. Hopefully, okay, so they, they. Yeah, if people are main decking a braids and there's besages, this just may not be the climate for this deck. All right, I mean, we're gonna try. Please stop. It's funny that Karn has the negative voice lines when I'm the one taking counters off him. Oh, pass the blockers, okay. We're blocking. All right, Bone Crusher's gonna cut down Karn. I think that's all right. The question is, do we Ratchet Bomb now, or do we just hold their Creature Lands hostage with it? 
They have another kill spell. Okay, there's Bone Crusher. They haven't activated Sorn yet. Yeah, the fact that. It... Oh, there's Thoughtseize. Okay, well, it's not. It's not looking great for us. Okay, that helps. So we could slam Eldrazi Monument, but then they thought seize Karn. I think we do that, even though it's not ideal. Um, just having so much more mana to work with really helps. In fact, we can even sacrifice Inventor's Fair, you know, to grab something. So that that was unfortunate. We were close. If we had been hitting land drops, we could have gone Monument into Karn. Then we feeling pretty great. And we didn't draw any creature lands either. Okay, Blood Tide Harvester. Yeah, we need Ugin the Spirit Dragon right now. Alright, Ugin the Spirit Dragon, come on. token so that they pass priority back to us. And we're supposed to be priority holder, man. Alright, so I don't think we can do enough. If we could have, could have put a second counter on Blast Zone, then we might have been able to, uh, what does this do? Yeah, so it just, it just, we just can't, sorry, we can't get past this. We need big Oog in there. Well, this is good against an aggro deck. There may be an argument for running more than just one Adventure's Fair. I mean, it is legendary. So there is that downside. Okay, so we've got turn two Ratchet Bomb. Depending on what we draw, we might run out Celestis. Okay, interesting. Um, go ahead and toss the Ratchet Bomb out there. Blood Tide Harster is just such a strong creature. I mean, it goes in the Artifact decks, it goes in the Vampire decks. It's good with Fable of the Mirror Breaker, because you copy it and you get a removal spell and a it's just strong. It's worth noting that Ratchet Bomb doesn't just hit creatures. Oh, it's non-land. Okay, so it would have done nothing against their creature lands. So, last game. Alright, we're just gonna put a charge counter on there. Alright, um... We could... Throw out Celeste. I think we throw out this. Just roadblock mode.
Let's see what they got. My turn. Well, put another counter. So did they purposely do that to flip the werewolf? I don't quite get it. Um, so if we Karn plus... I mean, he just gets so much loyalty, so let's just... Let's try it out. We could, if... Worst comes worse, ratchet bomb away the blood type harvester. So. Oh, there he goes. Okay. So we get just a single card. Yeah, people packing um, abrades and bedevils and besages. It, we may need to rethink this strategy, running, running this strategy at all. Alright. So much versatile removal these days, it's... It's gonna be tricky. So I'm thinking... We want to block him. I don't think we really need to. I think. Well. Yeah. Actually, no. Change of mind. I will block because if we move Ratchet Bomb up to three for next turn, Circuit Mender is going to die anyway, so might as well save some uh, damage. There we go. Fortune, they're packing the devils, so. It'd be interesting to destroy this in response and try and like save the graveyard going. Okay. Now we could. Oh, okay, they got Den of the Bugbear. That's not great. So, Forsaken Monument is such an all in play that gets completely blown out by the devil. We could throw out two mana rocks. Crack it and then throw out two mana rocks. Is that better? Um, I think I go for the high. Oh, they just artifact destructions everywhere. Yeah, we're gonna go high upside. So that's what they're waiting to do. They might be expecting rafts or something like that, so they're not overcommitting to the board. Or maybe maybe Ratchet Bomb's holding off their stuff. Yeah, there's still a bugbear. That card is really good. Yeah, we're not gonna be able to do anything about it next turn. Alright, on Maybe that was, a, yeah, that was a mistake. We should have cracked the Ratchet Bomb um, at the Declare Attackers. Because they're going to drain us with this Graveyard Trespasser ability. So, so that was a mistake. We should be one life higher. But Forsaken Monument is going to do work right now. Okay, let's think about this. Nope. Okay. I'll play Celestis. I'll play Maze Mind Tone. Now they might 
they're going to have removal for like our creature lands if we animate them. So a little hesitant about that. And then, no, not that. Okay. Throw a ratchet bomb out there. And I think that's where we stop. Uh, now, if only Ratchet Bomb could kill Creature Lands. Oh, Celestis is going to be great right here. Now, the Heirloom gets us two more life off Forsaken Monument and can attack the Graveyard. In case they have like Croxa, the Blast Zone. Yeah. Let's discard Blast Zone. Okay, they pass into attackers. All right. We're going to attempt to block with the uh, Mobilized District. And if worse comes to worse, if they annihilate it, I guess they, it's vulnerable to Bone Crusher. We can uh, activate Maze Mind Tome. That would be the worst case scenario. Oh. Okay, so that is unfortunate, but um, we do what we can. We need some action. We've seen one planeswalker thus far. Now we do have another creature land um, crawling barons. That's one we could sink a lot of mana into to at least keep it out of bone crusher range, but it, it's still vulnerable to fatal push. The question is, do we keep Ratchet Bomb on zero? Moving up to three would kill the Celestis. I think we start moving it up. All right, Maze Mine Tome. We're just not doing anything right now. Got another land, that's great. Now we have enough for double activation of of crawling barons, but like I said, it does nothing against fatal push. So And they just have so many ways to threaten us next turn. Do we even care about that double activation? Maybe not. I think we I think we take a turn off. Just turbo out our mana. And then another maze mine tome. And then, let's hit the brakes for now. Now, I think it's worth getting Ratchet Bomb up to three to ward off their Graveyard Trespasser and Bone Crusher. 
and Fable of the Mirror Breaker. All right, two counters on that. We can draw another card off this one. We have a billion mana. Okay, there we, there it is. Okay, so how do we do this? Because they still got the creature lands. Of course, it was going to tap in the worst way possible. So let's let's remedy that. And. Come on. I'm hitting the undo button instead of my mana rock. Alright, so now we... What? Six. Seven, eight. Alright. Big Ugin. Now this, this might do the trick right here. Now we just need three. Yes. And they have creature lands. So do we. Um, trying to figure out how to defend it best. How much mana do we have? It's so hard to tell. All right, I think we just uh, we just pass. That's right. There's Den. Now, if they have removal, do they have it? Right, Ugin's alive. Alright, so they got another Bone Crusher. We got Maze Mind Tome, though. Oh, not even the correct... Alright, well... Auto Tappers. Messing with this. All right, that's good. Yeah, land, land down. Yeah, I mean they're, they're, in, they're in trouble now. All right, so now we just plus Ugin, and now I think we just it's deprioritizing the colored mana, even though we don't need it at all. Okay, they'd seen enough. I was going to say, there's... Well, that was a great battle. Um, the life gain off Forsaken Monument was unreal. I don't even know how much we gained. And the creature lands, just like... They just couldn't put us under enough pressure with how much life we were giving. And, yeah, fortunately, their artifact destruction was used early. Otherwise, it would not have worked out for us. Alright, here we go. Let's see what we have. Yeah, I mean we're gonna we're gonna try it. Like we need land number three really badly, but this could go really well if we get there. Alright, there's hive. Thought seems to be bad. So, Celestis is what's holding this hand together. Let's see what they take. I mean, I'm sure they got creature removal for Circuit Mender anyway. So, yeah. So, they 
this down the line. Okay, this hand's a lot worse now because we don't have the possibility of a turn four for Sanked Monument. All right, don't usually see this paired with white, so. All right, opponent, we can gain life as well. All right, so they have a different kind of sacrifice theme going on here. All right, barring barring another thought sees, that's a turn five for Sinking Money. Okay, Ayara. Okay, Let's see, do they have oven? So our life our life total is going to be under assault here. All right, so this allows us to activate Crawling Barons and not turn into a creature. We don't want to expose it to removal. Decline. All right, I mean. Show us what you got. Do you have the discard spell? Okay, so they can sack a cat to draw a card. Yeah, I mean... Do they have an answer for Ugin? Now, unfortunately, Heart doesn't protect against Hive because, or Hive of the Eye Tyrant because it has Menace. But oh, we have four mana left over. Interesting. I mean, this is essentially game over. So. Let's see how long they hold out. I mean, there are there are things that could win them this game, but all right. So they've successfully got one cat into the graveyard. And then I think we just slam Circuit Mender. It's more mana efficient. All right. Now they probably have pla planeswalker removal. They have a, a blood chief's thirst. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they're they're completing quests at the end. All right. We got there. All right. Here we go again. Yeah, this seems pretty good. We'll we'll start off with Maze Mind Tome in case we're not drawing lands. Um, this might be a game where we just Karn for Forsaken Monument. That depends on whether our opponents were need to discard or not. Okay, so this could be the Sacrifice deck again. All right, so um, we want Maze Mind Tome out there. And, I mean, we got things to do with our mana, so we'll probably just start off with the scry. All right, is this uh Oh, fight rigging, okay. So this is a little different. We, If we can get Ugin down, small Ugin down fast enough, we might have to destroy that. All right, let's just uh, scry. Circuit Mender. I think we'd rather get a land at this point. Okay, that's good. Um, do we play a Heart of Yeah, we play Heart of Kieran because then it can defend Karn when he comes down. Now, unfortunately for us, the game might already be over. If they have Titan of Industry under here and they play... Um, 
The 6 4 menace for 3 mana. What's its. Oh. Shakedown Heavy. That's its name. This could get ugly. Oh. Yeah. Born clicks. Alright, well, we might as well get our scry counter on here right now. Mobilize district. Yeah, I mean, I think we're so profoundly dead right now. I mean, we could Karn, but what good would it even do? They just basically can lethal us. I guess the good it does is that it can... Oh, boy. Yeah. I forgot what that effect Warnclex has. <laughs> so we are not getting something. Yeah, we're just... We're super dead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just can see that they got us. Well, that was our first run with Colorless Super Friends in Explorer. Um, I think there's some potential there. It's definitely clunky, like we would kill for just a Mind Stone or something like that. So um, I think there's potential. We'll, we'll keep playing and tinkering with it. Uh, just so much fun to play Forsaken Monument. So um, I was strongly considering having like a white splash for some of the white rafts in the format. Um, this land right here is on plan with Forsaken Monument and gives us white. So it can tap for colorless or white mana. There are a lot of these type of lands throughout Magic's history. Unfortunately, there's just not many on Arena. And so it would literally just be these four and then we'd have to play a bunch of planes and other stuff. So it would sort of kill the Forsaken Monument plan if we did that at this current time. There might be some uh, colorless lands that can help fix... Well, I know, actually, I know there are. So so that's just another consideration as a direction to take it. But yeah, let me know in the comments um, what are your favorite colorless cards to play? What kind of uh, wish board do you run for Karn to Great Creator? And whether you think this deck has any potential. So thank you so much for watching and have a great day.